Okay, yeah, we're recording, and I think we're going out live. Okay, on to uh, Facebook. Uh, let me see here if we're okay. Uh, let me see. Let me look over here and see that we're uh, we're broadcasting out. Uh, is it going out? Yeah, I think so. It should be. Yeah, there we go. We're going out. Okay. All righty. All right. Hello, everybody. How are you? Oh, God, there are already eight people waiting to come in here. Boy, you people are uh, gluttons for uh, punishment. Uh, here they come. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Sheckman. Uh, there's Steve Bender. There's Jeffrey Jeff. Stein. There's uh, Brian Neary. There's Scott Boddicker. There's Andrew Deutsch. There's <laughs> Charlie Wallace. There's uh, hey. well, Ann Nunn. Actually, it's uh, Mr. Nunn, not Mrs. Nunn. Mrs. Nunn. Uh, <laughs> And uh, let me see here. Where, oh, where'd he go? We, we got, he got, Come here. Oh, oh, he's out at, oh, Vernon, you there? Turn on your camera. Len LaFrisco, Charlie Wallace. Hello, everybody. How are you? Got, how are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, our pleasant little get together on, uh, on, uh, on Mondays, which I, I just love. So anyway, how, how, you, how was your, uh, your week? All good since I saw you last? Yeah. yeah, no complaints. Well, everybody's excited. You saw a shiny coin guy said, as of Wednesday, we don't have to wear masks. That's right. It took him a week after the... Uh... Well, he didn't want to step on Joe Biden's toes. So he wanted to wait a week so he could get the headline. Oh, I see. But here's what I don't get. Okay. He said... Um, Science. Uh, no, he said... Uh, Wednesday, right? Yeah. Right? What's wrong with yeah. tomorrow? What's wrong Not with Tuesday. tomorrow? What's wrong with today? No, yeah. the science doesn't show that. It shows Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. At 1 p.m. Yes, We exactly. have a quarter moon on Wednesday, so that means it's okay because we have a quarter <laughs> moon. That was like that was like when they had the curfews. Remember they had the curfews? They would announce it like on Thursday, and they said there's a curfew starting on Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could never figure out why. It never made any sense. Or we're closing whatsoever. the subways in a week or whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, 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 but I, I don't understand why he said Wednesday. You know. Well, he wants to get two days of headlines. Oh, I see. I mean, it, it, he had. Is there anything we have to prepare for for two days? Because I, I guess don't... for stores to put up new signs. Mm -hmm. I the stores know. still say wearing a mask here in Texas. I've been out. I've been out walking, okay, mm. and not wearing a mask. Oh no! <laughs> Have you been Are you dead yet? Huh? <laughs> Are you, Are dead, you dead, dead yet? <laughs> no, not. Yet. But you know what's funny? We had this thing about a week ago. The um, uh, the CDC said what they said. I see more people out there wearing masks now than wore them weeks ago. I <laughs> yeah. don't understand it. It makes no sense. It's all the anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers are, are wearing masks to protect them from the vaccine pe vaccinated people. <laughs> yeah, because uh, now who was it? Who was it that told me on the show? Oh, it was Patrick that told me um, an old gathering get get together we have on Saturday nights. Uh, with each other, not we don't broadcast or anything else. That he has one person who told him that well, you got you got vaccinated. Well, you'll be dead in a year. Mm -hmm. That's the new one running around. If you get the shot, you'll be dead in a year. Yeah. But at least, you get, at least you get free French fries before you're dead. Yeah, yeah. that's right. What a crispy cream. Oh, no. oh, Chris, free crispy cream donuts too. <laughs> Trump, Trump will be, I just Trump will be one I just of the first. Then. Trump, Trump will be one screen. of the first dead then, right? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see the experiment there. <laughs> You know, as a guy in Ohio, I just want you to know I'm not sharing the million dollars I'm getting from this lottery. <laughs> Y'all can find your own. You gotta find your own state money. <laughs> really? Okay. Oh, I well, uh, uh, don't don't people get a little pissed off that they that uh, in your state if they got the uh, hi Marjorie, uh, hi. Uh, 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 aren't aren't they a little pissed off if they got the shot already 
And so and now they don't qualify. get the freebies. Right. Yeah, it, right. Right. People, pe people in my state are going to get pissed off no matter what you do. So, oh, okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I, I just want a steak and shake. <laughs> well, who yeah. was it? John Oliver showed this on his show this week. Was our wonderful mayor here in New York, Mayor de Blasio, oh. eating a steak and shake hamburger? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, shake, shake, shack. He took a bite, and then he what it is. Say whatever, steak shack. And shake shack. Going, mmm. <laughs> Vaccination. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's got every vegetarian in America just wanting to get a vaccine. We got a yeah. lot of morons running this state. <laughs> well, running this country. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, you know, when, when politicians come up with ways to, to bribe people to do things, you got to wonder where they learned that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's what you call sh the shiny penny, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the shiny coin. Yeah. The shiny coin. Yeah. You throw that out there and you go, now I didn't molest all those women, did I? You know. <laughs> well, that, that's exactly what, what we said before is. you came on, Marjorie. Was why Wednesday? What's significant about Wednesday that we have to wait till Wednesday? I mean, or what? Yeah, to wear mask to not wear masks. Oh. In other words, he's doing away with the max mask. But Wednesday. on Wednesday. On Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Not <laughs> today, not tomorrow, but Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. What happens well, if on Wednesday I go oh. to physical therapy? Mm -hmm. And everybody has to wear a mask. And, we, and that was last week. I yeah. wonder what's yeah. going to happen on Wednesday. I th I I'll do. tell everybody. <laughs> I don't think if things in hospital settings are not going to change. Yeah. That's not right. going to change. You're going to have to wear masks in a, in a medical setting. Yeah. You should, that anyhow. should be the one place you shouldn't have to because that should be the one safe place, but apparently it isn't. Mm -hmm. and this, is it from Cuomo? This is from Cuomo? This is from Cuomo, yeah. So what, happens, what, what happens if he gets in trouble with another woman between now and Wednesday? <laughs> 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 get, all taxes are forgiven. <laughs> legalize marijuana that's the most important thing. Oh, yeah, there we go what'd you say marjorie he legalized marijuana yeah he legalized mm. marijuana right after all that stuff came. Yeah. You, know. you guys you guys need a temperature gauge you know a temperature gauge and just have every little step so every time he gets in trouble you guys know what's coming up now my, now my question like what's is, the next thing we need becky marjorie what? you're the only one who can answer this question Will you vote for him for governor if he runs next year? You know something? I think I would. <laughs> I would vote for him because there's no one him. else in right. this state. Right. Who else are you going to vote for? Yeah. He's yeah. basically done a good job. Yeah. Oh, I mean, Steve Bender, you're another New Yorker. Would you vote for him? What's the option? Hmm. Yep. Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, Rob Astorino from Yonkers, who got about 3% of the vote the last time. Yeah. I mean, if he's, the, if, he's, if he's the Democratic candidate... I'll vote for him, right? I'm not going to vote for a Republican, and so yeah. Are you going to well, vote for um, Bill De Blasio, who thinks he's going to be governor, eating French fries? He's no. going to try <laughs> to run for that. I bet. Oh yeah, but but, but Steve, uh, how about uh, in the primary? Would you vote for him? I have to probably. I have to see who's running. You check. Again, I'd have to see who's running, but I I can't think of a single name right, right. now. Yeah, that I would vote for. What's the status of the scandals now? No one's been talking about it for a while, since the marijuana stuff, right? Well, no, well the he, woman he, who's he, the uh, they, they attorney general up. is still investigating him. They're still investigating, and uh, uh, I think he's going to... And a year I, from now, we could have the same discussion. They'll still be right. <laughs> investigating oh, yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, either like that, or it will all be over and done with. Seems I mean, like Matt Getz is still the representative from, from the panhandle. Yeah. Seems like it's going to survive this. The mayor race is more interesting to me because we've got a, you know, a lot of people. And there's a debate like soon. I think June 2nd is the mayor debate. Well, there was one last week. Right, but this is going to be all of them. I yeah. thought last week was all of them. I didn't so, watch so it. Who, 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 who do you like for mayor? I like Garcia. That's only because the New York Times said Garcia. Well, yeah. I've been looking into what she's doing. What she, she was ahead of sanitation with all those guys. There you go. She got the garbage picked up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems like, and I have an inside, little bit of inside information on this, but the most interesting, the most capable person, I think, is probably Sean Donovan, 
who won't win because he's just a really smart white guy who worked with Obama. But he, you know, Obama handed him the housing crisis, and you know, he, you know, he's, he's, he's very experienced and he's very smart. But well, from the ads that I've seen, and that's all I can go by. See, I can't vote in the primary because I'm an independent. Yeah, that's what. That's the only reason I'm registered is so I can vote in primary. I'm thinking of going back to being registered for local congressman. Huh? Well, Alex, in New York, the Democrat automatically wins. So, what good is being in quote independent? Mm. Other yeah. than your ego. <laughs> well, I was. I was somewhat pissed off at the Democrats. I mean, yeah. I think they're, they're pretty inefficient in their yeah, own. No, I did that too, and then I went back because what you're just giving. You know, our friend quote. Steve Weiner is yeah. the same way. He's a quote, "I'm an independent." Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. Well, it means I'm an independent. Yeah, but what I realized, I mean, I became an I, be, I became an independent, right, and realized I'm never going to vote Republican, and I want to yeah. have to say in who the candidate is. So. And I, it only it only becomes important in 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 the regular general election. Right. Well, how do I how do I re redo my uh, my classification? You'd probably do it online. I don't, you know I'm not sure. Exactly, because then you can vote in the primaries. <laughs> yeah. And the Democrat, whoever the candidate is will win. So it's irrelevant. No. I mean, being exactly. an independent. we have had Republican mayors and governors. Yes, we have, obviously. Were Giuliani? Uh, yeah. 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 Wasn't he a Democrat before he became, quote, a Republican? No. no, I think he was always a Republican. I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He just goes where he thinks he's going to, you know, win. Yeah. <laughs> Except a Democrat. Is legal uh, uh, the shrimp back, is his name. back in Transylvania, I think he was a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a Republican, we, had, we had a Republican was, governor before Cuomo, right? But there, was, there was an interview with Cuomo, and the, the person, yeah. the, the new exactly. reporter asked Cuomo, uh, asked yeah. Cuomo what, what, what's with the girl in your office? And he, he said, how do you know there's a girl in my office? Because you're wearing her panties for your mask. You grabbed the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike Gizem. Mike. I, I, okay, I have two questions. Um, one is ignorance and the other one is uh, curiosity. The ignorant question, yes. is it possible in the States to be registered as an independent on the state level and then as a party on the federal level? Or once no. you register on one, are you both? So that's the first question. The second one is if uh, Bloomberg challenged Cuomo, would anybody vote for Bloomberg instead? Yeah. No, at this point. I, I think pe people would. No, I wouldn't, but people, I think people would. I don't I think I, for, I, I don't oh, think I, I, don't, I don't think absolutely. Really. Uh, you know, I thought he was a good mayor up until his last term. Right. Who? Three to the Who? Who else? The third term is always the curse Bloomberg. of death. Bloomberg, yeah. Bloomberg. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, you know what it is? Because by that time, they then get to feel entitled. Yes. So they then pass things like, you know, no sugar laws. Well, <laughs> well also the, fa the fact that he was able to run for a third term. Yeah. Well, he changed. That's what killed Christine Quinn, you know, who was yeah. going to be the mayor because she supported him in the third term initiative. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, and can you be registered as an independent for the state, but not the federal? Or once you're registered, you're registered. No. It's all or nothing at all, I think. Yeah. Okay. And Texas. Yeah. No. If you if you if you're not registered, you're not. If you're registered, you, whatever you're registered, independent, Republican, whatever. But in some states, forever, you could be an independent and still vote, and not because in some right. states, if you're a Republican, you can vote the Democratic. Yeah, in yeah. Texas, yeah. Yeah. You, you, in you, Texas, you can. In Texas, you can vote in whatever primary you want, regardless of how you register. Yeah. I voted in the Republican primary uh, uh, when uh, Trump and and. What's his name? Cruz were running. I voted for Cruz because I didn't want Trump. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Day too, I think. I don't know. I should have voted for somebody else. How did that <laughs> work out <laughs> for you? No, <laughs> that guy's an idiot. Is that like picking between hepatitis B? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you're making me laugh. <laughs> you, know, you know what's interesting? Okay. About? I, I, I don't understand this. We have how many people here? 13 people with me? Yeah. Right? Yep. We only have eight people watching. Four of us have to go watch and shift the balance. <laughs> <laughs>
get off. Yeah, what phone. are you people all doing here? That's why uh, the numbers are so <laughs> well, All right, everybody get off. We're going to go watch. We're going to go <laughs> listen, yes. You know what's funny, Alex? A couple of the people who watch have reached out to me on Facebook, sending me requests to... Me yep. too. Yeah, yeah, I've had, had it happen too. too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And, and they're I all think, like, I've listened to Alex for 30 years, you know, and, and just just ardent supporters. It's 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 fun to see that. Yeah, but yeah. then they're not here. Like yesterday, I the day before yesterday, I um I walked up the big stairs up uh up mm -hmm. at Columbia University. Get my violin out. <laughs> I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm okay. just saying. But it's I coming. got to the top. That's good because you're not getting it. <laughs> and then I sat there and I did a little. It's coming. I did a little something for 25 minutes. I think um, Deutsch was watching. I think and Lafrisco was watching. Yep. Uh, and um, I just, you know, was just talking. You were, stuff. you were scaring me walking down those stairs. Yeah, I, mean, I, was, I watched <laughs> it later, and I was holding my breath. Well, the, thing was is, the thing I was is that my sense of balance isn't what it was. And so well, I, Alex, have down, I have to go down, I have to go down the steps sideways, not straight ahead. Yeah, it, I was just, yeah, I was, you're scaring the shit out of me. I, know. <laughs> I was waiting, really? Alex, Alex, I was waiting for you to start spinning the phone around and making noises just for fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on the grass. Found it on the grass there. <laughs> Alex, Alex, special effects. <laughs> it was a thing. I started walking down the stairs and then I looked and there was another flight of stairs. <laughs> another flight of stairs and another flight of stairs Sending in the going, I, I think I, I and I, I knew I could probably get down okay if I just went sideways down the steps okay it was isn't when, there a railing you could hold on no, to? There was oh, no. no railing some of the stairs have a railing and some of them don't and and it gets very scary when you see that there are no railings all the way down to the five flights of steps that you've started once you've started you gotta finish yeah, I'm going to call that the Blasio guy for you. So yeah. what are you doing? Were you watching really? me and waiting for me to fall? <laughs> no. Well, not with, hoping you wouldn't fall. Oh, right. <laughs> watching with our fingers on 911. Getting yeah. Are you watching that too, Brian, did you say? I, I, no, I watched it after, so I didn't see any big, big headlines of, you know, Alex Bennett, former Live 105. I think you were saying Take the fall. And the bizarre yet tragic line. accident. Yeah. Well, people are going to take my call from California and say some guy in New York just fell down the stairs. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think this. I think this. But Alex Bennett killed in Park, not Mugger. I take this. Man <laughs> gets calls from all over the U.S. Right. I take this Jerry Lewis drug called pregabalin. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I take it, and what happens is the next day it makes me a little wobbly. I mean, I don't. You take the stronger, Alex. You take the stronger dose. No, I don't take the stronger dose. I take about a mid dose, is what it is. You know, that's what he prescribed to me. And I don't take it every night, but I get wobbly. Uh, you know, I don't have the same sense of balance that I normally have. Mm. And also, I'm getting, I'm older. You lose a sense of balance. Look at Marjorie. She's the biggest klutz of all. Time. She keeps talk? falling and bumping into stuff. And, you know, she could break a yourself. Hip. She could break a hip just thinking about it. <laughs> you know. Tell them what happened to you today. No. It's... This is a real old person thing. Go ahead. Tell them. <laughs> I don't want to. You, you hurt your hip. Oh, no. I'm not Join saying the club. club. <laughs> what? Who said that? I, I said join the club. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> because my wife had her hip replaced. All oh, of her girlfriends well, really? either had hip replacement or are going to have it. Now, if you keep replacing all these parts, are you going to live longer? <laughs> slow oh, you're going to be Steve Austin. Yeah. The bionic person. <laughs> exactly. Come on, I'm still alive. That's it's a run in slow motion. <laughs> you, yep. <you're>... Yeah. <laughs> With sound effects. Do you ever go back and watch those shows? Oh my god, I'm yeah, I watched the I watched the six million dollar man one time, the opening credits. I was like, oh my god, I used to watch it every week. <laughs> well, I don't know whoever thought it was a good idea if you were gonna say how fast somebody was going to slow them up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
if you really want a classic, you got to watch the one with the six million dollar man and Bigfoot. Oh, man, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> that was that was the best of the worst. Oh, really? Oh, it's awful. And really, what we fell for were the sound effects. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> How embarrassing. Yeah, but um, on the flag, do they slow him down at all to say he's going really fast? Flags? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How could you not when you want to have a quality <laughs> show like that? But if he's going really fast, he should just be a blur. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the sign of quality is in that slow motion. You can just savor the speed. And you know, the women wanted to see Ugh. Lee Major's face. I mean, come on. Was he a hump? Sure it was his face they were looking at? Oh, everything else. <laughs> <laughs> bionic, yeah. What else was bionic? <laughs> <laughs> well, they wanted to see Lee Major's face in Farrah Fawcett's, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie doesn't even know what we're talking about. Do you ever watch The Million Dollar Man? Six million no. men? No. I hardly ever watched it, but I knew it existed. You know, but you, you know enough it? about it, about the characters, because yeah, you're talking you, about it. Have you ever watch it, Shecky? Never seen an episode of that or the spinoff, The Six Million Dollar Woman. Woman. Bionic Woman. Oh, no. Bionic Woman. Bionic Woman. Bionic Woman. Bionic Woman. Oh, Lindsay Bionic Wagner. Woman. Yeah. The Bionic Woman was an important show because there were so many questions left unanswered from the Six Million Dollar Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Bigfoot? Yeah. Wow. And that, nowadays, you know, that, you know, you have to have, you know, uh, diversity. So you'd have to have like the Six Million Dollar, you know, African American and Asian American and, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and Superman and whatever. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting the $6 for the Six Million Dollar diversified little, little person. Team. <laughs> you, uh, uh, you know what i i i um i I've, i found a new kind of racism that exists you know in that when they when when white people go why isn't there a black six million dollar man <laughs> well you know isn't that a kind of racist thing to ask i mean isn't that the thing for a black person to ask not a white person to ask Mm. Or a, or a white person trying to be funny. <laughs> well, I was thinking today, and I or a white to, person. I hate to bring this up because it's a very serious subject. What's going on in uh, the Mid East right now? Okay, oh, yeah. with with God Horrible. and Hamas and and Israel and so on. But it seems like there is never an American president who is willing to jump in and say, "Hey, both parties are wrong." They all come up with the same statement. Israel has a right to defend itself. Oh, yeah. And John Oliver did a very good thing last yes, night in he did. explaining that, yeah, I mean, people defending themselves, one thing, but in proportionately, like, for instance, all these rockets Gaza shot over, very few of them even reached Israel because they have this iron dome thing where rockets go up and shoot them down. Mm. Meanwhile, Gaza doesn't have the same thing and they're lobbing in these these rockets, which are disproportionately blowing up children. The buildings are going old down. Ladies and, and and buildings people are living in, and so they're on. evicting people. And I kept trying to think, why is it every American president says exactly the same thing? Whether it was Trump, whether it was Obama, whether you know, Israel has a right to defend themselves. Voters, well, they're more well, below the okay. money. Well, no, but isn't it? a anti-Semitic notion the Jews are rich therefore we must keep them happy <sighs> I, I, yeah. think, I don't think that's it Alex I mean it, no. take it to a different analogy you, you run into a room with a knife and there's 20 people and you're you're stabbing at people and and the guard shoots you did he use excessive force as as you're injuring everyone in the room and he needs to stop you no, but we're not talking about that. Kind of stuff. No, but but you know the, this idea that because they have the defense, the fact that they're getting a thousand missiles. The, the the true story is this: Hamas from outside of Palestine has come in, and the Palestinians allowed them to set up. Yeah, they're shooting thousands of missiles to try to ex expel and use all of the defense mechanisms. Yeah, but so part that, of it. Part for of that the, later. I, I don't want to get into too much political talk today, but part of the reason why they have done this is because Israel was trying to evict them 
from their right. homes. Right yeah. near the uh, right. Native Americans in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We broke every fucking treaty we ever made with the Native Americans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm saying. Which is like ridiculous. He's the one president who jumps in there and says, listen, you kids, quit fighting. I'm not going to take sides with either of you. What would we do if a, if, a, if a bordering country, say Canada or Mexico, launched a thousand missiles into the U.S. tomorrow? <laughs> our response, what would our response well, be? Well, I mean, we all know that, uh, that uh, uh, Canada is perfectly uh, capable of that. And that's yeah, why we really have to keep them on, on, on yeah. guard. I do think our, gov our government. <laughs> but, but what would our response be if, if somebody did that to, to Hawaii or someone did that to, to Alaska? We have to defend it. No, our, our government is coming close to calling for a ceasefire, right? They, I think they will if this keeps up much longer. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I just think that rather than... Uh, well, we can what? send Trump's son-in-law in to fix it because it didn't right, he, did, he, he obviously did fix it. He did a great job. Yeah, look at it. It's yeah. just fine there now. <laughs> but what I, happens if they run out of missiles? <laughs> <laughs> the U.S. will send them more. Yeah. 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 But well, that, that, that is the strategy of the Arabs that are doing, that are firing the missiles. It's not the Palestinians firing missiles, it's Hamas. Mm -hmm. Is let's see how many of these missiles we can use so that they can expel and use all of the defense ones that they have. Yeah, but the US will back them up in a minute. Maybe, maybe not. But they're so. they're counting, they're counting on possibly not or not in time. Well, I just think that we shouldn't take sides in that situation. Right. And we should we should attempt to be the peacemakers by saying, hey, both you kids, cut it out. You know, <laughs> I don't care which one of you is right and which one of you is wrong. This has got to stop because innocent people are getting killed. And who's going to listen to the United States these days? Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, <laughs> more, more this month. Thanks to our former president. It's it, true. Or the, or the current one who halfway through telling him this will forget what he was saying. Mike, <laughs> yes. well, the first, the first thing, there's two things here. The first thing, of course, is if Canada launched a thousand missiles into the United States, you'd have nothing to worry about. Our missiles are full of fries and cheese curds and gravy. So you got no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> Second, okay. though, like what Andrew just said, isn't that like such a moot point? The idea of Israel launch, launching all of their defense <laughs> mechanisms that they have aren't they one of like the u.s's biggest customers when it comes to uh, probably, probably like i mean you restock those shelves like you restock a pepsi uh, exactly. machine don't you like that's not a that, that's not realistic is it no no and um you know i mean it, it just it just i don't know i just i just don't think we've ever come up with a, every president that's ever existed also tried one other thing i'm the guy who's going to solve the mid-east problem right yeah. And they all try, and they all fail miserably. Every except last Trump, time. Trump didn't try; he just turned it over to his son-in-law. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not schooled enough in the in the issues, which are so complex. But how much of this is Israel, and how much of it is Netanyahu's ultra conservative? It's Netanyahu. It's Netanyahu, right? It seems yeah. like it's you know right. the, he's the, the, the problem. I think it was a controversial <laughs> election. Did, did, does he just keep serving until they decide that he's yeah. guilty of something? Yeah, and it just gets. I don't think they have term limits. And because, and he, but time, he can't, but he can't form a government at the moment. That's the problem. I mean, yeah. Netanyahu, much how, can you, how can you like a guy who's been named after two uh, uh, technology companies? <laughs> <laughs> Netflix and Yahoo. <laughs> Well, I, it used to be the joke used to be Netscape and Yahoo, uh, but I'll, yeah. I'll I'll accept a Netflix. <laughs> for the, uh, That's a smart man joke, Alex. It took me a second. I never heard that before. It took me a second to click into that. Well done. Yeah, but you know, but, here, but, here, when when but we're but you know war. within the security well realm, we are Israel's biggest customer. Right. Mm. Are we? Do we buy that many? Our whole border system, the camera system, is all. Israeli. Is it? Absolutely. I didn't know that. I would go to them. I mean, how many, how many are... thousands of years have people wanted to wipe them out? Yeah, but the trouble is they'll try and Jew you down. There, there's <laughs> more, no. startups, more tech startups in Israel in a year than any other country in the world. Mm -hmm. But but the thing is, you know, from, from a political perspective, when people are in fear, for some reason, they always go to the right. So if for Netanyahu to regain his full power, 
this is the best thing that could have happened for uh, him. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think that, I, that, that, that there's something going on there. I've heard that. I've heard people about, say that that's what it's even all about. But it's all about I've heard that. Yahoo, are are we talking uh, about serious yeah. stuff here? Are we talking about serious? Yeah, on the Monday show, we're not supposed to do that. No. Okay. Not. More important, Jimmy Fallon has been picked up for five more years. Wow. Oh, God. All right. Really? <laughs> oh God. Makes sense. Or, totally makes sense. Is there a reason why? Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. I guess Lauren Michael like Cuomo. There's nobody else running. <laughs> you know? Lauren Michaels runs late night over there, man. He's got a stranglehold now. Five more years. I read something the other day. I'm guessing that uh, Shecky would understand, would be able to help with this. They were talking about why Letterman didn't get the Tonight Show. And because Leno he was an did. ass. Because he was an ass. That's what they said. And I was absolutely blown away by that. Why? He was that because bad. you want someone who's going to suck the blank of the affiliates, and Dave mm. would not and do also, that. You, uh, Dave, Dave also, Dave, Dave also had. It's not that he had an adversarial relationship with the network. He found no. He just funny. didn't respect them. He didn't respect me. Found <laughs> thought it was funny to put them down. Right. Huh. You know, made for good jokes, and it does. And that's why Dave didn't go into syndication when we left NBC, because then he would have to suck up to two hundred and twenty. Station right. managers. Right. Mm. Okay. All right. Oh, could I go have lunch with you and your wife in Topeka, Kansas? <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, your wife is beautiful. Oh, that's your daughter. No, he was not going to do that. <laughs> and the Carter book talked about that. The Carter book basically said that that's where the most money probably would have been if you would have done oh, that. Oh, he would have made but a fortune it, in syndication. But it would have taken that work that you're talking about that just like, screw that. You know, yeah. the guy from Topeka, you know, again, Topeka, I'm telling you, I can think of, you know, he's waiting to meet you but after the show. And then Dave's got to put on the fake grin and, you know. Yeah. That, yeah. that late night, that late night show, I think that's when Len's talking about. <clears throat> when they interviewed him or somebody interviewed him, you know, he was saying that he was trying to be a good boy and not doing anything because he wanted to make sure Johnny knew that he was waiting in the wings for it. Oh, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. He was told by Jack Rollins, who is a wonderful human being, you don't campaign for this job. Right. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that was, Jack, you know, Jack died at 100 five years ago, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And that was the way in the 50s. You mm -hmm. didn't go, and Helen Kushnick, Jay's manager, instead did the scorched earth policy. Because mm -hmm. that's where she came from. And Carson oh. was on, on Dave's side. He wanted to see him get it. Yeah, but when Dave finally said, "What do I do here?" and and he said, "I think he told Dave something to the effect that even if you take it now, you're not getting the Tonight Show." This was when Leno had already taken it for a while. Mm. Yeah, you're not getting the Tonight Show. There is no Tonight Show anymore. There's the Jay Leno Show, and uh, he'd be better if he went over to CBS. I mean, that was the. He, he called on well again it came up last night if you watched it last night which is true johnny went to carnegie hall and quit and was in our studio 20 minutes later right oh i love that yeah and he and dave off the record yeah great off the record i mean, I mean they spoke during the afternoon so it wasn't a shock to dave of right. that announcement right was it a shock to the network absolutely they didn't in that appearance though on on late night carson just kind of skirted by it and dave didn't even hardly acknowledge it like they didn't even he did say okay i'm gonna be done and i just was talking a little oh, I, didn't, I was in the control room i didn't even realize what he said yeah yeah it was, it was really more like oh boy johnny's in the on the stage mm. it went right over my head mm. so the one but it's cool though I because actually, i actually walked out with johnny when <laughs> marty wall who was our head of security asked for a couple of us to walk johnny down you know, go down the elevator, walk him to his car. Mm -hmm. Did he say anything funny? No. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I just stood behind and followed. You know, that's all. Supposedly, Carson was a very quiet person when he wasn't yeah. on the air. He was when he wasn't drunk. drunk. When he wasn't yeah. drunk. <laughs> wow. On, uh, on were... one of Conan's podcasts, I think it might have even been a, a Conan podcast that he had Dave on as a guest. Conan told this story about Johnny Carson coming into the Simpsons and doing a uh, um, a quick little cameo 
And he said that it was almost like he was holding court, like because he was in a room of writers and he ended up staying there for hours and hours and hours because he was with his people and telling mm -hmm. all these stories. And I think that that from the narrative that I hear all the time is that he loved telling stories to people that he knew he was safe with. And he said that they almost couldn't get him out of there. He was so happy to be there telling all these stories yeah, on the we had a staff, We had a staff Emmy dinner and it just happened Carson was in the same restaurant. And he came back to our quote party room of a hundred people. He was in there for at least an hour. Mm. Yeah. And it's been written up because Johnny took the check without telling mm. us. Do you know why you love the day and then Dave had to call him like a day or two later? We got back to New York and say, NBC was paying for it. We appreciate your, you know. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, you know who, who loved the whole court because he held court with um, uh, at my show was Leno. We went out mm -hmm. to breakfast afterwards and everybody came with us and, and Leno. I used to buy breakfast every morning for everybody. And he sat there, must have been for two hours, three hours, holding court, literally, mm -hmm. giving his advice on how you do this and how. Well, come on. That. He was the best stand up. In the 80s. Yeah, he was someone amazing. who did like 320 nights a year on the you know, absolutely. Stand -up. David, I remember David Feldman and I went to Frost Amphitheater, uh, where Leno was playing. He's mm -hmm. doing a show, the Frost Amphitheater, 9,000 seat. And we sat there and we watched him do his act. And Feldman said, It's the best I've ever, best I've seen. ever seen. You know, yeah. mm. he, he was just amazing. Uh, he what he would do, and it was a very smart thing. He had a whole act, all right, but he would come out and at the top of the act, he would do brand new material that was topical, and then go into the act, and then right. go into the act. And by the time he had gotten that far, you would almost thought that anything else he did was fresh too. Mm. Yeah. And and Feldman just looked at him working and said, "This is the best I've ever seen." I've yeah, never seen lousy it. talk show host, great yeah. stand up. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I saw him a lot in clubs in the 80s, in the early 80s, when he had the long hair. And um, he was amazing. Yeah. You know, he would get up, he would play the Lone Star Cafe and, you know, do an hour and a half, you know, just oh. hilarious. Just yeah, hilarious. yeah he's amazing. He was amazing. Now, yeah. on the, I haven't watched any of this late night, the CNN series. And I don't, is it, is it racist? You were saying, is it racist to ask, why isn't there a black mil $6 million man? A pretty much white boys club late night, right? Wednesday. Oh, but they did a lot of Arsenio. Was it last night? Okay. Yeah, yeah, last night they did a lot of Arsenio and Joan Rivers too, talking about yeah, women. And they, they've they've married some of the dots or they connected some of the dots that are happening, like now, and how the diversity is there now, and they're throwing the seeds that were sown back then to make that happen. I haven't seen. Yeah, the but you know they left out back of the night. Yeah. Some of those I, great I haven't seen the shows. I haven't seen the latest episode yet. No, we're, we're, I'm we're waiting to get it without commercials. Wasn't yeah. wasn't there a talk show with that uh, basketball player, famous basketball player for Magic Johnson? Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson. He had a had show. A, he had a show for a short time. Yeah. Wow. Almost yeah. as good as Chevy Chase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I still have my Chevy Chase T-shirt. <laughs> that was an amazing show. Watching that train wreck was unbelievable. I'll never forget watching that first what week of the, Chevy Chase. What was the late night show that that NB that AB that um, that Fox did, I think after uh, oh. Joan Rivers. Well, was that thick of the night, or was that no, before it, Joan the Rivers? name of it? It was an address. Oh, Wilton North. Wilton North. That's it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That was the show. Barry, Barry Sand executive produced that. So right. I'm trying to. So that was around '87. So that's probably after Joan Rivers. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, who was in that show? I'm trying to remember. Well, the guys, uh, oh, those, one of them was those guys that were just talking DJ. from Sacramento, California. Sacramento, yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm Tom, I'm so tall or something, and I'm Paul. I can't now <laughs> can't remember. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It failed real fast. But there were a couple of people in their, quote, cast of characters who became famous. Yeah. Hmm. We'll have to and I can't think of their names. Well, right. I could go look it up here. <laughs> they weren't that famous. <laughs> no, no, their w names you would know immediately if I could remember who Milton they were. Milton North. 
Yeah. I'll tell you one of the things that surprised me most uh, last night. I, I had forgotten that Joan Rivers' show was called The Late Show. Right. And uh, and it just, it, I was, I actually was on one of the Letterman forums that I'm on and I was, I was noting that going, holy cow, Jackie, you might even be able to answer this. Like when you guys switched over from late night to late show, did it Never even gave it a thought. But his radar? We were, it was based on the CBS late movie. Back yeah. In okay. the 50s, it's called The Late Show. Yeah. Right. Okay. But it's interesting how Joan's show was called The Late Show. Well, you and know who one of the writers TV. was on Wilton North? What? Conan O'Brien. I love uh -huh. it. Yeah. And uh, it was Barry Sand was another writer. And uh, Paul, well, Barry Sand was executive producer. Paul Krasner, Paul Krasner was on it. Wow. Jack Lane was on. <laughs> oh my God. <gosh. laughs> <laughs> comedy, I think Jack Lane. But Jack doesn't look like there was anybody who became famous later on. I'd have to look, but there there are a couple of I think a couple of women who were on camera performers. Yeah. yeah like I am I'm trying to think now. Not it wasn't Nell Scovell, but maybe it was Nell Scovell. <laughs> doesn't it doesn't seem to list any more than that. Was yeah. she a performer as well as a writer, Shecky? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. N Neil Scovell. Nell. Nell. Nell? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, there goes my sight, too. Everything's gone. <laughs> Can we go back to Mike being on the late night forums? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike, you need a hobby or something. Yeah. Come on. No, no, you don't understand. That kind of is my hobby. I'm, uh, I'm down. He showed all the these pictures hole. of his new late Yeah, Brian, rabbit. no more nerd shaming, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I see your Facebook. I see your Facebook. How dare you? <laughs> you know, look, he's already asked me what shirt I'm wearing today. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah I, I used to record that in Carson and then watch that the next day, every day, religiously. Well, yeah. Shecky is wearing a late night t-shirt tonight, today. Only because it's one I had out and I just threw it on. Now what? But what, the late night one—that's old school. I love it. But what I don't model, wear late show stuff. Oh, oh, you, oh, you, you, you don't wear the late show stuff. You just wear the late night stuff. You're proud. And it's of funny because as a, I'm a big fan, but I'm also like Gen Xer. To me, and I know I'm in the minority when it comes to big, you know, Dave fans. I like late show better than late night because I liked. Oh, How let's see the days, let's see like, the quiz machine one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm more the like. Okay, yeah, you're right. The content in late night, absolutely, no, no question. It was the interviews, and it was Dave like being powerful. Dave, like he amassed his power at the end of late night, and I really enjoyed kind of that that icon where he was usually more powerful or popular, whatever you want to say, than any guest that would come across. I like that, Dave, a lot. Well, but I'll tell you what happened with Late Night, and I think Shecky will agree with this. Late Night, they had nothing to lose. Exactly. I mean, yeah. They had nothing to lose. When they went to CBS, they had everything to lose. And I'm sure he be, he became, he, he started wearing a suit. You know, you know I, got, I got Gene Autry on the show. I got Lash LaRue on the, sh the old show. You mm -hmm. couldn't get them on the new show. No. Right, right. I mean, a perfect example of, of what happened when he went to late night early on was the whole incident with Bill Hicks. That would have never happened at no. any late night. Absolutely not. No, absolutely. Yeah. And I get that. Like, I know I'm in the minority. But that's, and I, but that's and also why. the producers convincing Dave, this is what we have to do. I'm sure Dave, in theory, and I don't know this for hmm. a fact, was like, Oh, that was a good set. Okay, I'll, we'll, we'll do another show tomorrow. Yeah. But but the but, rest of them got into a, like a room together, everyone else going, we can't air that. Well, at, at that point, everybody was sitting mm -hmm. around with their arms folded saying, well, he did it in the late night, but I don't know if he can do it in early, early night. Okay. And also, you know the story about that segment. But, but, but Bill Hicks? I stole it. What? What do you mean? When it was cut out of the show, I grabbed the tape, and that's what yeah. aired 15 years later. It's because you had, you still had a copy of it. Because I had a copy sitting in my office. If you hadn't had a copy sitting in your office, it wouldn't would have aired. Wow. Well, it would have disappeared awesome. completely. Because it was edited out of the master tape. Wow. And it didn't exist. Now, the truth is, 
What happened was, in case people aren't, aren't familiar with the story, Bill Hicks was a great comic. It was uh, like show 32 of the, yeah, set, really, of the CBS show. Really early on. And uh, he did a couple of jokes which were all pre-approved. Everything was pre-approved. Well, Morty approved them. And Morty yeah. will tell the story. I mean, he doesn't... Then, like, then when, in, <laughs> when the, after the show was recorded, they felt uncomfortable with it. And then they, I, in fact, they talked to Bill. Bill said they called him at the hotel and he, he was happy because he had finally done a set. He felt best represented what he did in comedy. And uh, uh, according to, uh, I think it was Barry, uh, who called him? Barry Sand called him? No, Morty. Barry yeah, was Morty called, called him. him. Morty called him. And, uh, and Morty, Morty's the one who, quote, vetted the segment because yeah. Morty was the segment. And he had to tell him, we're not going to run it. And they didn't run it and tell them what they ran in its place. Wasn't, hey, it, wasn't, wasn't, it Bill, wasn't it Bill Sheff from one of the shakedown shows? Yeah, it was one of the it was one of the test shows they did before they actually ever went on the air and they had somebody, Bill Sheff. I think it was did. Bill Sheff doing, you know, no. five minutes of stand-up. Yeah, um, which wasn't very good. But well, they they, yeah. they they filled it in there. Uh, it was a horrible situation mm. that happened. But that would have never happened in late night. At late night, and then Hicks months. died like nine months later. Oh yeah, well I, I, I called Shecky, and I said, "Did you hear about Bill Hicks?" And I think your first words out of your mouth were, "What did he do now?" <laughs> and, and I said, "He died." And he went, mm. you, "You were shocked, you know." Oh yeah, yeah. but uh, because no, they they Morty and he left it on a good terms that you'll be right. You know, we'll invite you back shortly and then he got ill yeah yeah um and he was so he, it was not like he was if you want to call the word banned he was never banned from our show yeah well i had the privilege of him calling my show the day after this whole incident happened and tell the story hmm. in fact i think uh bert lar's son uh, john lar wrote an article about it and i mentioned in that article as one of as the person that he called to talk about it, you know, uh, it it was a very sad situation. Yeah, what year was that? Were you on in California? This was on, when I was on 93? No, 93. 93. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I was well into it. It was probably October 93. Yeah. Yeah. So I had actually come back from Florida by then, I think. Uh, yep. Yeah. I can't remember. Huh. You know, look, it happened. It wasn't the best decision that was ever made, but yeah. He, years later, he brought uh, he brought. Uh, well, he had his mother uh, on. He had his yeah. mother on and ran the segment. You know. Yeah. And said we never should have done that in the first place. He totally like I I I love that about Dave. I love when Dave does do uh, go down a, a path that he regrets many times. He, he will bring it back and say yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. He apologized. It was and I yeah. and I don't think there's anybody in the audience who would ever hold that against a person for apologizing for something. Exactly. Hey, I was wrong. Well, don't forget we're done taping at six thirty. You have till eleven thirty. And sometimes you don't have enough time to sit and really have a discussion. Yeah. Mm. You just do what's best. You don't want the new network to be mad at you. <laughs> I, have to go home. I can't even remember what the joke was. It was about killing Jesus. Christ. Oh yeah, and that uh, Jackie getting Kennedy. a shotgun and killing Christ. Yeah, and, and Jackie Kennedy wouldn't like people have, walking around with a little sh rifle pendants. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, or was it another joke about uh, the fact of uh, uh, burying people or something in? Senate? I don't know. I just remember the killing Christ with the shotgun. Yeah. But all that was okay ahead of time. So, you know. It happens. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. But I'm saying that's why the morning show, why the afternoon show, the, 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 the NBC early, show. The, the late night show. Late night show was so, so terrific. You know, is because. I but, mean, do you think Chris Elliott could have gotten away with all the crap he did oh, on the my God. CBS show? Yeah. Um, thanks, Andrew. What what Lynn Lafrisco write here? It reminds me of uh, Larry oh, he, Sanders. Don't don't do uh, don't 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 do chat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I I he po he posted the link to the set. That's why. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, don't don't don't. I I probably should turn the chat off here. I thought I did turn it off. 
Yeah. But what the hell? Look, now you got me in trouble, Andrew. Jeez. It'd be handy to have that in the comment section of the video, though. It'd be handy to have that there so people know what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, it, the chat should only come off on the side, but it comes off right on the screen. Yeah. And that's the problem with it, you know. And then everybody who's watching us sees the chat. <clears throat> uh, but, uh, yeah, but that, uh, you know. You know, look, and again, I can go back to the 917 show. Mm -hmm. Right after Dave did that 12, 15 minute monologue about how horrible it was, he called everyone up. Was that okay? Do we need to read, you know, like. Do we need to watch? That was one of the, that's one of my favorite moments uh, from a Redo broadcast. Redo it. Did I say the right thing? Did I do something? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My dad's generation, I always say to them, Dave Herman is my Walter Cronkite. And they look at me like I'm just crazy. Um, but it's moments like that, that that is like that for me. Like he, that, that speech was so eloquent. And I mean, they didn't reshoot that. That was you, his you first realize off the top, one take, right? You realize there are kids around today who don't know who the hell David Letterman was? Of course. Mm, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yep. that's how fast times change. Yeah. Um, they, they dropped off a phone book, a phone book, you know, the yellow pages out here, okay. like, like a year ago. <laughs> And I had Stephanie go get it. She went and got it. She's she's 12 at that time. And I said, you know what that is? And she says, no. Oh. <laughs> I said, yeah, open it up. And she said, what are all these numbers in here? Like, it's oh. amazing. You know, Shecky points this out to me on many an occasion that uh, about certain actors, like most kids don't even know who that actor is. They don't of know who John Alan, is. I they taught you know. I taught a film history and theory class for yeah. 20 years. And as of you know, ten years ago, between five years ago, ten years ago, you they didn't know you you know you could show them John Wayne, mm. you name them, Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, whoever they had no clue ever of any of them. And these are pretty, these are smart kids who were signed up for a film elective. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, but you brought that up to me once, Shecky, and I thought about it and I went, "You're right." You know? Yeah. It, 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 when we talk about Jack Parr, it's I, I don't think there's a kid out there who knows who Jack Parr. And it's weird because the kids have greater access to all this stuff than we ever had. Mm. Well, you know what I came but up with? But it's in black and white. Right. It's in black and white. You know, Let they me can't hear watch a, it. a thought that I've had lately. You know, I love old music. I love Frank Sinatra music. I love, uh, you know, all the old stuff. Uh, Shecky does too. Um, people like Cab Calloway and uh, Count Basie and so on. Uh, but they're not getting played today. And one of the reasons they're not getting played today is because I can't play them even because I have to pay for the rights. Mm. Older music probably should be a little more liberal with non-commercial broadcasters so this music stays out there. But ASCAP, ASCAP wants their money, you know. I know, but but don't you agree that the way it's going, this music's going to die just because people aren't. But winning? remember WCBS FM, which I guess still plays the quote oldies. oldies. <laughs> the oldies are now from the two thousands. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where it used to be, if you remember way back, it was a sixties based, fifties, sixties based right. 50s and 60s. playlist. Yeah. yeah. My question is, when's the last time you know you heard Frank Sinatra played on the radio? Maybe on Sirius, which I don't get or pay for, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. Is, Jonathan yeah. Schwartz, yeah. is Jonathan Schwartz still alive? Still doing Sinatra? No, well, he's alive, but he doesn't have a show anymore. They got Turner Classic Movies. There needs to be, as a public service, Turner Classic Music. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, it's just that I'm saying that this music is going to die because nobody's playing it. And part of the reason they're not play playing it is because they have to pay for it. And if they're going to pay for something, they're going to pay for something newer. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know uh and and uh it's it's kind of yeah i thought i thought about it and i said you know i'm mean, here i am with my uh iphone listening to all the sinatra and going there's no i can't play it on the air i wish i could i can't afford to but it's i also i'm not running a commercial broadcast so there should no, look be after a certain amount of there years an exception it's for what i do to keep it alive isn't it public after a certain amount of years? No. Yeah, after, if it had to have been published before January 1926. No, go go to the go to the the guy who knows all about this. Shecky, public. What? 
What is public domain these days? 75 years. There you go. Wow. 75 years. So 20, as, as Andrew said, 1926 at the moment. So I can play old Paul Whiteman music? Yeah. I don't, I don't know, know if ASCAP would come after you, though. It's in the public domain, but does that mean that recording is in the public, meaning yeah. the musicians? You'll get a kick. I'm sorry. No, I don't well, wait a minute. Yeah. Do the songs stay? Uh, stay no, in other words, let's just say Love Nest, to use an example. Paul Whiteman recorded his George and Gracie theme. The song is in the public domain, but does that mean a recording of it is in the public domain? Mm. Okay, I have an old recording. I still have a, probably one of the few copies of this recording. On an, on what, Robinson Crusoe? Yep, where did Robinson Crusoe go <laughs> Friday and Saturday night? Al Jones, 1916. Could I play that? In theory, but then in theory, the Al Jolson estate could come after you for a payment. Really? Because oh, you're using Al Jolson's voice. Mm. Uh, I, I have the original or... sheet music. You own that it. counts. Yeah. The original mm. sheet music to what? To that. To where does Robinson Crusoe go with Friday and Saturday? Yes. Where I mean, get... we have a ton of sheet music original from the 1700s on. Oh. Really? It's yes. a diverse group in this place. And Man. some of the covers are gorgeous. The lithographs. Yeah. Yep. Now, well, it's work. like posters from the teens and 20s and 30s. Yes. You know, a two reeler you never heard of had a gorgeous poster. Yeah. Absolutely. My question is, Shecky, what's more valuable? Her sheet music, where did Robinson Crusoe go with Friday and Saturday night, or my recording? Probably her sheet music. Really? Because she oh. could sell it. Yeah. Mm. Especially if it's a first edition. If it's a first printing, yeah. And someone would want it for the artwork. Absolutely. Oh, okay. So I, I can mm. throw my record away? Uh, <laughs> well, the record has been re-released on like 10 million Al Jolson compilations. Yes, but this depends on the print. 78, though. Why does anyone mm. care about a 78? <laughs> What's the 78? <laughs> Are they going to play it on? <laughs> yeah, can anybody even play a 78? I would like to think the 78 was worth something. There's I'm, people I'm sure that pay is. good money for 78s. Yeah. yeah. There Ironic are people. Hipsters. Ironic hipsters are on that all day long. But again, okay. those people probably already had that recording. Yeah. It's all about it's not, want. It's definitely not a one of a kind because Jolson would sell let's say 500,000 78 of a recording. Mm -hmm. I have, I have. So you a, can go into an antique shop somewhere and probably find one for $1.50 if you find the right antique I, shop. I have a postcard here from, uh, that I got from John and Lennon. Uh, oh yeah. Who's that? It, well, that the, the point <laughs> I'm making is some people would say, who's John Lennon? He ran Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong Lennon? That's probably worth a fair They amount. wouldn't even know that Lennon. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to use for my podcast Handful of Keys from Fats Waller, and that's 1929. So I got to wait a couple more years before I can use it. Hmm. Yeah. I was going to use it as my opening music, but uh, I have I have the 78 because I rebuilt a, an Edison Victrola from that I found in a barn, completely wow. refurbished it from really? zero. A yeah, cylinder? we're not cool. a that's super cool. Or a disc? It's an Edison disc player. It plays the thick, the thick old Edison ones, and I I have a separate arm that flexes so I can play regular seventy eights on it. Mm. But I, it's you crank it up and it plays beautifully. I I, I found it in a in a yeah, those things used in a barn for twelve dollars and built made it like new. I had a couple of those that my grandparents left me mm. of the really thick ones. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I've seen one. Yeah, the, the needle has a fixed yeah. spot where it stops. And then if you want to play the thinner ones, you need a needle that has a flex so that it's it's a different, you swap out the, the shaft on it. Hmm. But uh, Is that a sexual <laughs> reference? <laughs> Sorry? Is that a sexual <laughs> reference? It absolutely was. Because I, yes. had a, I had a girlfriend once who wanted to swap out shafts. And <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's, it put me it's out like of Tampa's there. Telefunk and U47, you know, just never know. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, this has been fun once again.
an hour just goes flying by and it's a bunch of people really like each other and it's a really good thing to be all here. You've been very quiet, Vernon. Me too. Do you like my wallpaper or do you like Tony's better? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your wallpaper is nice. Tony's is hideous. <laughs> my wife will be happy to hear that. No, that's not hideous <laughs> wallpaper. No, it's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, did, did, did uh, Shecky, did uh, 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 Tony come over and bring his mother's holy water for you? <laughs> no, he hasn't. He hasn't been over, and he might be mm. listening. But Saturday night, he went and was going to have chinks. Yes. <laughs> he always refers to kids. Like, <laughs> what? Well, you know, I mean, come on. He, he's not really being racist because he doesn't oh, no, it's do not anything being bad not being by racist. it. It's what he calls Chinese food. Yeah. It's what he grew up on. Yeah. 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 Hey, well, listen, it's great to having been with all of you again, Shecky. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey Stein. Uh, thank yeah. you to Steve Bender and to Brian Neary and to Scott Boddicker out there in Texas, to Andrew Deutsch in Ohio, Len LaFrisco in California, Vernon Nunn in Kentucky, right, Vernon? I'm still here. Yeah. Oh. Bob Q. Kazoo, better known as uh, Kathleen. She's up there in uh, upstate uh, California. And Guala, uh, <laughs> and uh, Mike Chisholm up in Canada, and Marjorie Miller, who's lying in my bedroom right now. Our Absolutely. <laughs> With all these little pictures she bought, cartoons of us. And uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you so much. Always good talking to all of you. Why don't you all give a big wave goodbye? I'll give a big wave goodbye, and we'll hang this whole thing up, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you, Alex. Bye, okay, bye everybody. Bye.